Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of diaries over this long weekend. Uh, most importantly, one from Jan that was published uh, yesterday. And this particular uh, diary looks into a new, at least uh, to me, and actually was uh, to Jan, to a file extension, and that's .txz. Uh, this particular file extension is actually short for tar and then XC, the uh, compression uh, algorithm, the compressed uh, file uh, type. I was familiar with Tor, I was familiar with uh, XC, but uh, if anything, I usually saw TGZ, not uh, TXC. Well, it uh, turns out that Windows added support for it in Windows 11, and at hackers wasted no time and started using it, similar to ha how they have used zip files and similar format in order to distribute malware. Of course, new file extensions like this, sometimes your defensive techniques may be lagging a little bit behind so double check make sure that these files are not allowed as standard email attachments don't really see a legitimate reason to really distribute files like this as email attachments but before you go uh, too drastic and outright block them, maybe look at your logs. If you have access uh, to logs that uh, do indicate whether or not uh, someone has used these file extensions legitimately in the past. Luckily, at least for the samples that Jan found, the files that were included in these archives were well-recognized uh, malware. Interestingly also that Jan saw them in languages like Croatian and uh, Czech, but of course Jan being in the Czech Republic may actually see some of these attachments that uh, not all of us uh, typically uh, notice. And in case you're still counting, we are now up to four Google Chrome surveys in about two weeks. Well, as usual, once a day restart Google Chrome and once a week double check that you are running the latest version. Maybe even once a day these days, given how often we do see these surveys and related uh, updates from Google for Google Chrome. Also, this is yet another example of a type confusion in V8, uh, Google's JavaScript uh, engine. So exploits are probably not that hard to come by, given that there are many similar vulnerabilities in the past. And talking about uh, Google, looks like Google is uh, going to kick uh, global trust out of the club of trusted certificate authorities. Global Trust is the name that you usually see in certificates, but the company behind it is called e-commerce monitoring uh, GmbH, and uh, it has violated some of the rules that certified authorities are supposed to follow around certificate revocation and instant handling and reporting. So Google announced this fairly drastic step, and it's very likely that others uh, like Mozilla, Microsoft, Apple uh, will follow suit. Now, the way this works is that the certificates from a global trust will not immediately be untrusted. Instead, what's going to happen is that any certificate issued after July will no longer be trusted. So existing certificates will be good. But uh, if you're used to go to Global Trust to get certificates, you probably need to look into a different certificate authority for any renewals that you have coming up. And Checkpoint is reporting that it is seeing some attacks against its VPNs. Uh, these attacks are brute force or credential stuffing attacks. So no specific vulnerability or weakness in the device itself other than, well, they do allow simple username and password authentication. So do use two-factor authentication, just like for any other remote access technology that you're using. 
Given that uh, this uh, came up in the news a few times, uh, I had users asking, what about things like, uh, for example, WireGuard or uh, OpenVPN, where often you're using like public and uh, secret keys in order uh, to authenticate. Uh, those solutions are less of a problem when it comes uh, to brute forcing, because if you created these uh, public-private keys correctly, then they should not be brute forceable. But I still suggest if you do have the option, for example, in OpenVPN that's available, that you do look into some form of two-factor authentication or at least into something like uh, locking the private key on the device where you need to, for example, enter some kind of pin code or have it uh, stored on a YubiKey or something like this. So uh, the secret key cannot easily be stolen from the client device. Well, and that's it for uh, today. Uh, thanks again for listening. And, uh, well, we are sort of coming up uh, to the final countdown almost uh, for Sans Fire. If you're interested in attending my class at Sans Fire in person, uh, please uh, register this or next week because we'll probably decide uh, at that point then, you know, which classes we are actually going to run with the life component. So uh, thanks, everybody, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.